all to the next session on know how series this video is about the second part of layout diagram in the first part of the video we have seen the different set of layout design rules and general guidelines on how to draw the layout in this particular video we are going to take a boolean logic function and try to implement the layout diagram and finally estimate the total physical layout area in terms of length and width for the implemented boolean logic function in the intent of learning how to draw a layout diagram for a particular boolean logic function which was implemented using static cmos design what we are going to do is we are going to keep aside the layout design rules as of now and try to understand how to draw the layout diagram and how to estimate the total physical layout area because for the university based exams or for the paper and pen method we cannot exactly retain the spacing of 4 lambda or 3 lambda because we need to understand what is lambda what process that we are going to follow whether it is going to be a 180 nanometer technology and so that your lambda will reduce and all those calculations we cannot retain when we draw using paper and pen method for the university based exams when you try to implement all these layouts using cat tools then it is certainly possible and it is mandatory to retain all these layer dimension spacings and overlaps now we will try to understand how to draw a particular layout diagram for the given boolean logic function here i have taken the stick diagram of this particular logic function which we have seen in the third part of the video on stick diagram the video links are given in the description box below the first part of the video on layout diagram is also provided in the description box below for your kind reference here i have started with stick diagram why is that so is the general layout guidelines are much similar to the guidelines of stick diagram so this we have understood clearly how to draw a particular stick diagram for the given boolean logic function with this we are going to differentiate the layout diagram with a set of rectangles now here we can see the visual representation of layout diagram here instead of drawing in terms of thick lines here we have used all the representation of vdd vss layer p diffusion layer n diffusion layer polysilicon gate metal layers all the layers are represented using a set of rectangles the additional point which we mention here is the envel representation around the pmos transistor and then i have marked all the labels of vdd vss output polysilicon gate metal layers which are mentioned as a b c d e which we have obtained from the common euler path of stick diagram representation and then i have marked all the intermediate nodes all these markings look much similar to a stick diagram except the set of rectangles that i have drawn instead of thick lines now let us proceed how to draw the connections again the connections are also going to look similar to a stick diagram the only speciality is what we need to understand from the layout diagram is the estimation of total layout area once all the vdd vss polysilicon p diffusion n diffusion layers are fixed along with the envel region we have to just connect the common interconnection nodes that's the rule which we have followed in the stick diagram also that we have just used a single thick metal line here i have used a set of rectangles so here two and two are connected vdd is given here and vss connections are given here and all three connections are made out connections are connected in common and that completes the layout diagram so this is very similar to a stick diagram and now we will move on for the important phase in the layout diagram is the estimation of total layout area in the process of estimation of layout area the important point that we need to observe is how many contacts have been taken from the p diffusion layer or from the n diffusion layer whichever is greater that we need to first identify so here let us start counting the contacts which have been given with the interconnections so here i have one contact here i have two here i have three here four five so totally there are five contacts that are placed on the p diffusion layer 
Similarly, let us start counting the number of contacts in the end diffusion layer. So that is again with 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. Since both the number of contacts in P diffusion and N diffusion layer are same, we can take either P diffusion layer or N diffusion layer. Otherwise, the rule for estimation of layout area says whichever is having higher number of contact points, that particular diffusion layer has to be taken for estimating the horizontal tracks because in the process of estimation of layout area, we are going to identify two important things. One is the horizontal tracks, which is going to give you the total length of the layout. And the other one is the vertical tracks, which is going to give you the width of the layout area. Since we have equal number of contacts in both P diffusion and N diffusion layer, let me just take the N diffusion layer and count the number of horizontal tracks. So what is the procedure for counting the number of horizontal tracks? Between two adjacent contacts, just make it to count one. Similarly, the next adjacent contacts have to be counted. And when I start counting the adjacent contacts, I have one, two, three, and four horizontal tracks in this particular layout. And similarly, start counting the vertical tracks. So how to estimate the vertical tracks? The vertical tracks have to be counted starting from the base of the VDD rectangle. Starting from this base, we need to count till the first contact. And then we need to identify all the connections which are propagating in the vertical region. So this is the next connection which is propagating in the vertical side. And here we have one more spacing. And even in that spacing, you can see here, there is a metal line which is connecting the output of pull-up network and pull-down network. So that spacing should not be left. Sometimes we forget to miss the spacing. So that also has to be counted for the vertical track. And then we have this vertical connection. And finally, this vertical connection until the bottom of VSS. So from bottom of VDD, to bottom of VSS, we need to count all the vertical tracks. So here the total count is 5 for the number of vertical tracks and the total number of horizontal tracks remains to be 4. And the last point which we need to observe from this total layout diagram is that we have an annual region which is surrounding this P diffusion layer and we should also imagine that we have a P well region surrounding this N diffusion layer. So when you have this N well region, there is a space which is left horizontally and there is also a spacing which is left vertically. So to account for the counting of horizontal and vertical tracks, we always add one plus one has to be done for both the vertical track and horizontal track count. So that we will see at last and finally estimate the total layout area. So for the estimation of total physical layout area, it is like a simple rectangle. So here for any rectangle, we will have a length and width. So that is what we have done. And one important thing is we are following lambda based design rules. So we need to define all these horizontal tracks and vertical track counts in terms of lambda. So once you identify the horizontal and vertical tracks, just multiply the length and width because horizontal tracks is indicating you the length and vertical tracks are indicating you the width of the layout. So just multiply both, we'll be getting the total physical layout area. So from the layout diagram, we have understood that the total number of horizontal track count was four and the total number of vertical track count was five without adding any plus one. So now let us just add plus one and complete the estimation of layout area plus one into lambda will give us phi lambda and here plus one into lambda this is to account for the n well or p well regions now this will be six lambda therefore the total area is going to be five lambda into 
six lambda, which is equal to 30 lambda square. Thus, the estimation of layout area becomes very simple with the count of horizontal and vertical tracks from the layout diagram. The main objective for posting videos on layout diagram is with increase of complexity in the CMOS processes, the visualization of all the mask levels that are used in the actual fabrication process becomes inhibited. So the layer concept is translating all these masks to a set of conceptual layout levels that are easier to visualize by the circuit designer. So that's the reason we have seen all the layout design rules. We can use them when we try to implement using CAD tools, but for the university exams or for just understanding the layout diagram using paper and pen method, it is much similar to a stick diagram but the important phase that we need to understand is our ultimate aim for drawing the layout diagram is to estimate the total effective area of the layout. So that we have understood here in the second part of the video. Hope you all have enjoyed the video on layout design and the implementation of layout diagram for a given Boolean logic function. Thank you all for watching this video through Electronics Insight channel.